Hey guys, Chris from adapt Tuition here, and in this video, I'm going to show you the solution for question 5 in the Jan 2011 PUA paper 2. If you want to see the solutions for the other questions on this paper, I'm going to put a card up there and a link in the description below. So be sure to check those out as well. And with that said, let's get into the question. Okay, so it starts off by telling us that E. Sandiford is the owner and operator of Par Excellence Woodcraft Manufacturers, which specializes in building wooden fixtures and furniture. At December 31st, 2010, E. Sandiford presented the following information. Okay, so it starts off by giving us some stock at 1 Jan 2010, opening stock for raw materials, finished goods, and work in progress. Then we are given the closing balances for raw materials, finished goods, and work in progress. So we have opening and closing stock for some items there. Then we have a few more items given to us here. Purchases of raw materials, office supplies and stationery, packing material, factory supplies. So we clearly have some non-manufacturing stuff going on here as well. We have an item kind of separated by itself here, returns of raw materials, okay. We have another kind of separated item, office staff salaries, not sure why they're separate. Maybe to give it some breathing space visually. Okay, so we have a few more items here. We have wages of factory workers, that's direct unless otherwise stated. Factory manager salary, that's indirect. Transportation costs on raw materials, so you have carriage on raw materials, so that's going to come in handy. And then a finished products to consumers, that's carriage outwards. So we're going to deal with that. Next, we have a few more balances down here. Telephone, admin, advertising, warehousing. So all these are going to go well if we were in an income statement, right? Because, or unless they give us a way to split it between the factory and, well, non-manufacturing. Right? Warehousing might be the only thing. No, that's storage. That's not manufacturing. Okay, next we have depreciation, sorry, right, um, on the lath. Now, a lath is a tool that they use in woodworking that kind of shaves down things to make it smoother. So that's what a lath is, or lathe, however you pronounce it. Office equipment and factory machinery and equipment. So office equipment won't go in the manufacturing account, right? And we have rent and electricity. So, right, so these things are some of the tricky ones that we have to split between both um, the manufacturing and non-manufacturing um, aspects of the operation. And we actually have a note to that effect. The electricity and rental costs are a portion between the factory and the office as follows. Factory gets three-fifths, office gets two-fifths. Okay, so part A to the question says, to prepare the manufacturing account of E. Sandiford's business for the year ended the 31st of December 2010, clearly identifying totals for Cost of raw materials consumed, prime cost, factory overheads, cost of goods produced. Okay, cool. So what we're going to do, we're going to pull up the manufacturing account, E. Sandiford, manufacturing account for the year ended 31st December 2010. I use FYE to abbreviate for the year ended. Okay, so we are going to start with the cost of raw materials consumed. So go back to the top. We're going to need the opening stock of raw materials of $8,000. So let's put that in. Then we are going to need purchases. Where did we have that? That was below the closing stock items. That was $135,000. let us put that there as well. Now we have a couple of adjustments to make to that. We have the transportation costs on raw materials, the carriage inwards of $1,300. And we also have the returns of raw materials. One of the items they kind of separated for us, maybe to make it stick out in our brains so we wouldn't forget that we had returns of raw materials. That's going to give us the net purchases figure, which when we add it to the opening stock, is going to give us the cost of materials available for, for use. And then we have to subtract the closing stock at the end of the year, $6,000 there. Okay, cool. So we're going to put that there. And that's going to give us the cost of materials consumed. That's the direct materials, basically. We have the wages of factory workers, $62,900. That's direct labor. Uh, we, it's only those two direct items. There were no other direct expenses. So we're going to total those up and we're going to get 195.5. Now we have to deal with the overheads. Okay, so starting from the top here, I'm seeing packing material and factory supplies. So let's put those in. Packing material, factory supplies. Next, I'm seeing factory manager's salary of 28,000. So let's put that in there as well. Now we have a few more items here. I'm seeing telephone, admin, adult warehousing, all kind of thing here, right? So let's go to the depreciation. We have of the lath or the lathe and the factory machinery and equipment. Okay, cool. Um, now, don't forget the rent and electricity. So, rent and electricity, 30,000 and 7,200. But don't forget, they told us in this note down here 
right? That we have factory, we have, the, we have this, sorry, the split of those items between the factory and the office is three fifths and two fifths. So we're going to have to find three fifths of those two figures, right? You're going to see rent, three fifths of 30,000, giving us 18,000. And we're going to see electricity, three fifths of 7,200, giving us 4,320. The total for overheads is now 62,460. And we're going to add that to the prime cost of 195,5 to get 257,960. Now we have to adjust for work in process. So going back up to the top, we have the opening work in progress of 10,005, which we're going to add. Right, put that in one time. And in the closing work in process, 20 to 7, that we are going to subtract. Right, now I like to shift my work in one space to the left to have a net adjustment. You don't have to. Those two figures could be in the rightmost column and you can add and subtract going on as the case may be. And we get cost of goods completed or cost of goods produced, 245,760. Okay, so that was the first part of the question. Let's take a look at the next part. Okay, so part B is asking us to prepare a list of costs incurred by E. Sandiford's office to arrive at total office costs. So let's go back up to the trial balance. All right, so the first item I'm seeing here is the office supplies and stationery of 2,800. So we're gonna put that in there, 2,800. Next, if we go down, we're seeing office staff and salaries, 14,800. Let's put that in as well. Then I am seeing telephone and admin, all right, let's put those as well, telephone, admin. Now, there was also a depreciation item on the office equipment of 750, as you see in it there. So let's put that in as well. And then don't forget the rent and electricity had to be split between the manufacturing and the non-manufacturing aspects. And that split was three-fifths and two-fifths. So we gave three-fifths to the manufacturing account. So the two-fifths of those items are gonna go here. And when you total up, you're gonna get a total of 39,330 for office costs. Okay, there's one more part of this question. Let's take a quick look. Okay, so part C is telling us that E. Sandiford made 480 computer tables for the year ended December 31st, 2010. Calculate the unit cost of manufacturing one computer table. Show all working clearly. So the cost per unit. So all we're going to do is take the total cost of production, which we calculated in the manufacturing account, and divide it by the total number of units, which is 480. So that's going to be pretty quick and simple, and it's going to look like this. The cost of goods completed, 245,760, divided by number of tables made, 480, giving us approximately $512. And that's it for this question. Okay, guys, so there you have it. That's the solution for question 5 from the Jan 2011 PUA Paper 2. If you have any questions about it, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below, and I'll take a look and get back to you when I can. If you want to see any more videos, I'm going to put some cards up here. Don't forget to subscribe, and be sure to check out my website, where you'll find some pretty useful PUA handouts. As per usual, guys, thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you next time. Bye.